Hello everybody, Arch here and I'm back by popular demand to bring you a new grid video for 4.0 and Cataclysm. In this video I'm going to be covering how to use the GUI configuration as well as how to add buffs and debuffs for boss specific fights and just some general healing tips on healing successfully with grid. Okay, let's jump right in with the GUI configuration. As always, we're going to open up the grid GUI config by typing slash grid and we'll start with profiles. So one new thing that was added for 4.0 is the fact that we can enable dual profiles for our dual spec. For instance, I might be a hybrid and I have a tank spec and a healing spec. Obviously if I'm tanking I don't need to see everything that I need to see when I'm healing so I can create two distinct profiles for each role. Briefly, I'll just kind of explain uh, some of the things that you may want to uh, configure for yourself. Now first of all, uh, these, the center text area, this is uh, the option that I have for up to three lines of text to, to span across in the very center of grid. As far as the, the sizes and so forth, you can just kind of play around with those. I did crank up my icon size so that I could kind of demonstrate uh, something coming up on that Alakir fight. So these are just kind of aesthetic changes that you might want to adjust for yourself. Frame height and frame width are uh, important because those are going to determine the size of your boxes and basically how much information you can, you can feasibly fit in there. One that I will point out is the fact that you can orient the frames to be vertical or horizontal and that controls basically how is my health going to fill up. So if I have that horizontal that will notice uh, the health will, will deplete from right to left or if I have them vertical health will deplete from top to bottom. One of the major changes to grid in 4.0 is the fact that they've integrated the icon sides and icon corners. These are previously modules that you had to download separately and now they're they're built in. So what I'm going to recommend that you do is go ahead and turn on configuration mode for these and you're just going to want to kind of tweak these settings until they look uh, nice to you. First of all, uh, there's two options that we want to look at, and that is uh, enabling the icon cooldown frame, which will show the duration of buffs or debuffs that we set there, and also the icon stack text. And that will allow us to see something like, say, a stacking debuff or stacking buff. The next area we're going to look at is the layout. So layout controls uh, basically how my boxes are going to be arranged, and also uh, if I want to space them out at all or scale the box is up whatsoever. So for instance, in a solo layout, maybe I don't want to see grid at all, I could turn it off. If I'm in a party, show by group 5, 10 player by group 10, you could add pets if you want. Just a lot of different options here. Now you'll notice that I am using horizontal groups. If I uh, uncheck this, it would basically turn my grid into a series of columns instead of rows. But because I mostly heal heroics in in a 10 man, I'm going to go ahead and leave it at horizontal. I can also uncheck this frame lock, and now this is what allows me to move my grid boxes around. On the advanced uh, portion, there's just a few other different options that I have here. So, for instance, the group anchor will control basically how uh, subsequent groups added to this raid are going to populate. Now, right now, I have it set to top left, so for instance, this is group one. That means that group two is going to be entered in underneath there. So if I had a 25 man setup, it would actually flow off the screen. So what I would do is set this to bottom left instead, and then now it's going to uh, start on the bottom for group one, and then group five would actually be up here on the top. Now the next two areas that we're going to look at are sort of tied in with each other because they control literally what we see in a given fight on grid. So we'll start with uh, statuses. Statuses controls essentially what grid is looking for. So we can do things like add in buffs and debuffs. We can control whether a player is offline or has low mana, uh, their name. For instance, as a paladin, uh, my, my mastery gives my players that I target with direct heals a uh, small shield. And the name of the buff is Illuminated Healing. So I can click on auras and I can type in the buff name. Keep in mind that syntax is important here. Uh, it doesn't have to be case sensitive, but uh, we have to actually spell that right. So this is buff illuminated healing. Let's go and check it out. So 
So some of the behavior here that we can look for, first of all, I want to make sure that I check this box that says show if mine. If I don't do that, I'm going to see every other paladin's illuminated healing. It's going to be uh, sort of excessive on my grid boxes, and I, I really just only care about myself, as selfish as that might be. And also if I want to show the duration on this. Now it is, it is a bubble that has a short duration, so maybe I do want to take a look at that. Now, uh, let's take a cursory look at using an indicator to show this. So let's say, for instance, I want to see this on my side corner. Whoops, my corner icon. So we're going to point to the top right corner, and we're going to check buff illuminated healing. Now let's see what happens when I toss myself a direct heal. It should put that buff up. And we can see the duration on that as well. Now what happens if I put a beacon on myself, my beacon of light? It gets overwritten because it's a newer spell, right? And it has a longer duration. So the way we control essentially what we see when there's a conflict for that same real estate is through priority. So I'm going to go ahead and go to beacon of light and check out my priority is set to 99, right? Whereas it was only set to 90, which is the default setting on priority, on my illuminated healing. So if I had to see illuminated healing over my beacon of light, I would have to set the illuminated healing to 99 and drop this down to, well, basically anything below 99. We'll say 98 or 97. There we go. So there's the beacon goes up. When my direct heal lands, there's my illuminated healing. Now it overwrites. I could do something like add it to the border of my frames. So I'll say buff illuminated healing. Now this time let's go ahead and get rid of it in the other area. When I give myself a direct heal it simply creates that border. Now it's kind of a dull color so I can actually modify that border color by checking the color here. So maybe I want to make it uh, really bright white. Now when I have a direct heal on myself and I get that illuminated healing it's going to give me that bright white border. One very crucial thing to healing successfully in heroic mode encounters is the leverage of adding debuffs and showing debuffs in heroic fights. For instance, you were just watching my heroic Elecure fight. I need to actually add in each individual debuff for every new encounter that comes up. So part of the, the process of learning these fights is also noticing, you know, what sort of uh, damage are people taking and what are the names of the debuffs that are being applied. One of those I happen to know is called Acid Rain. This is a stacking debuff that happens in Phase 2 and it builds up and players take more and more uh, damage from it. So if I go ahead and type in that debuff and add it in here, it's going to show up in Acid Rain. And I've set this to be enabled and I don't have to do things like look at the duration because I know as soon as phase two is over it's gone. Now this type of debuff is something that I recommend putting into center icon. So you'll notice that I've added a lot of various debuffs and this this list is only going to get bigger for uh, the current hash of, of raid content for 4.0 and we can see that once I check this debuff acid rain I'll see it in phase two which you're now looking at in uh, the footage that we see here. Just a few last remarks on the statuses and then the indicators. So uh, things like health, health deficit, this controls basically the threshold for when I actually see my health deficit number appear. Now what I've set it to usually is is around 85. So for instance if a player's at 86% health, they're just going to get topped off by sort of natural uh, heals that are just kind of out and about. I don't really care about seeing their deficit. Once I reach that threshold, it will go ahead and show my deficit there on my center text indicator. So we can val validate that we do have that in center text. We'll see that there is my health deficit. Range is also one of the, the default settings that you probably won't have to mess with, but just in case you want to, uh, we can check the uh, time in seconds between range checks. You might actually want to bring this down a little bit. Of course, when you do that, it's going to consume more resources for the mod. But uh, we're mostly interested in players that are more than 30 
or 40 yards away. For instance, uh, I can't use Blessing of Sacrifice unless I'm within 30 yards away. So that's that's one of my thresholds there. Uh, more than 40 yards away means that I can no longer hear that heal that person. So this is actually pretty important. Now you'll notice that this whole time I've been doing this video, I've had this uh, sort of semi-opaque frame here for Lopas. He's actually in, in Warsong and he's at full health, so there must not be any rogues in that uh, in that particular battleground. If we go to frame alpha in our indicators, this is where we can see that, sure enough, more than 40 yards away is checked, which means if uh, that player is, is more than 40 yards away, if we uncheck this, then we'll no longer get that uh, reduction in the opacity for that frame. But, of course, that's something that you can turn off if you want to. It just sort of helps segregate players that are maybe in range or out of range. The last thing I want to talk about are just some uh, general tips on, on healing with grid. You should be able to see everything that you need to to do your job. Now, whether you want to show things like other players' hots or things like bubbles, that's that's up to you. But generally, I try to stick with you know only only the information that that comes from my character that I need to heal, and I like to see everything. So you know, if there's a debuff that is uh, of any consequence to me as a healer, I want to add that in and figure out a way to either get it into the center icon or maybe use one of the corner icons to, to show that. You know, don't don't go overboard. Make sure that your frames are, are clean enough that you can easily see that actual frame because when it comes down to it, you still need to actually see the health values and see, you know, really who needs healing or not, regardless of what uh, debuffs and, and so forth you're, you're showing on there. Other than that, I do highly recommend that you use mouse over macros. I know in a previous video I mentioned that uh, I'm not really a, an advocate of using Click, which is a mod that allows you to create these mouse over macros that are bound to mouse buttons. That's because uh, it, it is true that you know if you do a lot of your healing with your uh, right hand only and you don't use any key binds, it puts a lot of strain on your wrist, and that's that's a serious uh, health hazard because you'll if you're like me, you'll probably have wrist problems when you get uh, into your mid 20s, early 30s. So in order to do this successfully with grid, we have to uh, leverage the use of mouse over macros because we shouldn't have to click each individual player as we heal them. We just want to be able to stick our mouse over them, drop the heal, and then go to the next guy. So to do that, let's take a quick peek at a sort of generic mouse over macro that I like to use. And that is, uh, I use a double cast line. One is for the mouse over, make sure it exists cast my heal on them. If it does, does not exist, then it's going to follow the behavior if I'm just using a standard slash cast to my target or to myself. So sort of three checks are happening here. First of all, uh, the, the first check that's happening is, do I have a mouse over target? Okay, well, uh, that could either be a player's avatar. So if I see somebody take like a big splash of damage, or maybe it's a, a group and I'm casting a group heal, I can actually physically move my mouse over their player's avatar. The other thing I can do is I can mouse over a player frame, just like Grid. And if I do not have a target and I don't have a mouse over, then it's going to follow the standard slash cast behavior, which means uh, if I don't have a target, it's going to heal myself because I have auto self cast turned on. You'll see that in interface. It's in uh, combat. If I check this, it will auto self cast. If I don't, then hey, it doesn't actually cast anything. But I like it to auto self cast. Next is if I don't have a mouse over target and I have a, I have a standard target, then it's going to heal that standard target as opposed to healing myself. Part of what makes this macro so successful for me is, is the fact that I can actually keep a hostile target. So for instance, this could be the boss and I need to frequently judge the boss as well as maybe do things like rebuke interrupts or hammer of justice stuns and I can still do all of my mouse over healing I can heal this uh, poor sod, maybe this is some guy that's in my raid, and I can also just pull my mouse off and quickly heal myself. Still do the judgment, so on and so forth. I don't have to do any tab targeting. Uh, it's just very convenient and very efficient for me. Very little mouse travel. So that's it for this grid configuration video. I hope you all enjoyed it. Feel free to ask questions that I can't promise that I'll get to them all. And also make sure that I didn't already answer your question in the video, because I did get a lot of those last time. Other than that, Get out there, have fun with your grid, and heal the shit out of people.